sure that's a reef under me. Water isn't much clearer here. <laughs> oh no. It's definitely clearer. No. It's better. It's better. Let's get in on the beach, huh? Uh, we'll pull the boat up on the beach and we're just going to come for a walk down here look for the best campsite had a little scope down there but uh i reckon over here because on this point it's actually i came all the way out here i've come basically from all the way past there's a little island in between that sort of lump there that island in there but the water clarity is terrible in there and because the weather was so good i thought i'd take advantage and come a bit further out and look at that it looks beautiful over in this section and i reckon just on the other side of uh that little rock wall and just in here it looks like there's definitely some ground to sort of have a little rummage around but i reckon maybe up here if we pull the boat up just on this section here i reckon this might be the go it's quite a nice spot for a camp and then maybe under just under these trees because then you get a little bit of shade you can keep an eye on the boat doesn't look like the water's coming up much higher than about here at the highest of the high tides at the moment maybe right under here that looks amazing in fact we will just go for a walk just a bit further up see if we can see anything anything exciting I just want to have a look around this corner here because I've got a feeling there may be if I remember the Google Maps <laughs> there may be just a little little beach that's also campable just around here so we'll find out in a second because it could be well worth it because I think the better reef oh, it's hard to tell if it's any clearer or not but I think there's better coral reef around this corner as well straight off the little beach so might not be campable though, so we'll go and check it out. <laughs> oh, this looking, it's looking uh, maybe not promising. See how rocky it is. This beach keeps coming in, and there's actually a way to get the boat in. See, it might have been all right at perfect high tide. Oh, it's very rocky. I think only on the very highest of tides would you be able to get in there, and it looks like it's all rock, rock and rubble. Ruck. But uh, nice little bay though, and if it was crystal clear, geez, I tell you what, I'll definitely walk back around here for a spear and a fish. You can never really tell on Google Maps and maps because uh, it looks like a nice beach in the picture because it's shot from straight above and you can't really get that close. But once you get a little closer, it becomes apparent that it's uh, a little bit hard to land on. Anyway, we'll get back to the boat. We'll bring it a little closer to the campsite and uh, we'll get set up. Just gotta get the momentum, we don't want the deep sea wheels to dig in in the wash. <laughs> yeah. Tent bag and water. I'll take those two. <laughs> Carry this bad boy up. Oh yeah. Esky up. There we go. Feel a couple of cheeky mozzies getting around already. We'll deal with them. Lucky we've got a tent. <laughs> Otherwise they can be a pest. <laughs> uh, 
how's that for an outlook? That's beautiful. Just starting to remember why these campsites can be a pain. <laughs> Sand. Sand gets in everything. Oh, hats off. But we made it. Oh, yeah, no, there's a couple of mozzies getting around. Now we can get this set up and then we'll close the tent up. It is hot. Just hide him in the shade. And there's the boat. Still there. Well and truly high and dry now. At low tide, the difference in like the ocean is just it's night and day. Like it goes dead flat it goes really calm and still it's almost dead low now and you can just see just a little ripple here and then come high tide it's like it'll be hitting on the bank splashing around even if it's dead calm you'll still get a lot of water movement and a lot of uh, little like even small wave action blowing in and hitting the edge it's just just the difference is crazy <laughs> you got to be aware of it that's for sure at high tide because that little section where I am at could very easily if there is a little bit of wash it'll wash up and over that ridge very quickly so I can you can see where I can retreat to though just up on the side there and the tent will just sort of pick right up and just I can just drag it across which is good hopefully we won't have to do that I think I may oh it's borderline <laughs> yeah look that's where we dragged it up from guess we better get it the rest of the way up eh That will do, but I did notice that this is sticking out, I might just get rid of that, looks very very pointy <laughs> on the side of my boat, and we won't need it yet, but I'll sort a bit of rope out tied to the tree just in case. my figure eight you see for my uh, sailboat tether <laughs> everyone recommended to use the figure eight it's more of a climbing knot no chance of it coming undone more better I guess we should actually go and uh, jump in the water it's nice and low so we can work all of this sort of rock area here and on the other side a lot easier I'm thinking I'd like to get a crayfish I haven't had much luck with the crays recently they've all been pretty buried and tough to get out or too small so yeah we've got some time it's probably about oh, two o'clock now so we've got a bit of time to sort of have a little paddle around and, and put some time into trying to find one if not we'll get a fish of some sort and uh yeah we'll make something nice i'm not sure what it's going to be yet i'd really like that like a lobster actually or crayfish sorry depending on where you are and what you want to call it we might just go straight in off the edge of the beach there See if we can find something. I've got it. I'm pretty confident. It's not. I don't think the water is going to be very clear. Cause, uh, but you know that's why we had to come so far out. Hopefully this uh, will be at least reasonable. But it's hard to tell until we actually get in the water. Looked a little murky on the surface, but maybe once we get around that corner there. Surely if we're just in the shallows and we're mucking around for craze, surely we should uh, still be able to find something. <laughs> oh man, Silt City. Hopefully it'll get better as we get a little bit further out.
Yeah, I just went all the way around and back. Okay, <laughs> we're out of the water. Let's have a quick look at this crayfish because I'm dying to see it out of the water. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite, didn't all go to plan there. <laughs> but uh, we got, we definitely got lunch or dinner <laughs> and then some. Whoa. <laughs> Not a bad crayfish, that's for sure. Not bad at all, wow. What a beauty. All right, let's get back. We're gonna need to uh, book a little bit. So we'll put him back in the bag and we'll race back to camp. Right. We'll deal with you in a sec. We'll just quickly uh, maybe get some dry clothes on. All right, we're back and we're dry. Let's get this glove on so we can handle this guy a little bit easier. Grab this guy and we might just take him over to this log over here. Looks like a nice place. As long as there's not too many ants on it, should be all right. Or we could just use the esky, I guess. Ah, this looks nicer. <laughs> uh, or does it? Hang on. There is a few ants on it, running up and down. And the ants, as soon as they cotton on, it's on. Big time. We'll separate this guy first. There is a lot of flesh there. Look at that. That is amazing. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe split them down there. We'll get half of it out. We're going to do the uh, coriander mix and then the other half I think we'll just cook uh, just with some butter I think. Just butter, maybe chili and as simple as that. Oh, let me just pull this out. I'm do a bit of work on here. Might make it a bit easier than working on the log. If we're overly precious, we can just rip the poop shoot out. I know we can use the antennas and a few other tricks, but no need to this time. It's coming out very easily. Holy smokes. Look at that. That's next level. We got we have chili, garlic, coriander, and soy. And that's all we need for the first dish. Don't know if I'm gonna have time to do anything on the second dish. <laughs> We're running out of time. The sun is creeping down very quickly. <laughs> got a brand new soy. Open that up. Keep that there. So first things first, guess we better cut some of this up and we'll put it in the pan. So we'll do half like this and then the other half will cook. But we're gonna have a hell of a lot. <laughs> but I'm pretty hungry. Now I know some people might be turned off by this, but last time I had this, I couldn't believe how good it was. Sort of winged it and just made it up. It's been years since I've had it as well. Look at all that flesh. It's gonna be so good. So yes, I'm gonna eat it raw. Uh, no, I don't have a problem with it. Like it's, uh, look, once the soy's on it and everything, it loses its kind of more slimy texture. But this is actually still quite firm when you really look at it. 
it's just that initial kind of feeling that uh, feels a little bit more slippery than your regular fish flesh. But once the soy is on it and everything's mixed through, it's actually surprisingly delicious and it has a very distinct taste as well. So um, it's a very unique taste and it, I certainly, like I definitely enjoy it. Okay, it's a bit slimy. Straight in. Yeah, so with that spear, we, uh, with that little dive, we actually went and uh, we did head around to that little beach. We sort of went around this corner here, and all the time I was thinking, you know, it's pretty silty, it's pretty horrible, but maybe it's going to get better any second. It's going to get better any second. Let's just hold it. And it, you know what? It didn't get better. <laughs> it just kept getting siltier and siltier and siltier. And I was like, man, this is a bit of a farce. I saw one or two good fish, definitely saw some parrotfish. Okay, in with the garlic. And uh, But I didn't really want to get the parrotfish. Saw one or two tuskies that might have been all right to get. And I saw a lot of, like, or not a lot, but maybe three small coral trout that may have just been legal, maybe. <laughs> all right, then we'll just get a stack of coriander. I know a lot of people don't like coriander, and I know it's the gene that makes it taste like soap. And I'm sorry for you guys that uh, don't enjoy it, but for those that do, it's a very unique taste and surprisingly, like it's so good and it's so unique that if you do like it, you know just how good it can be. So, and I understand that not everyone does like it. I know we have a bit of a running joke about that, but I am one of those people that love coriander and it's really good. <laughs> in my books, so uh, uh, I can feel those midges starting to fire up as well. Okay, let's try not to waste our ingredients. In goes the coriander, or the devil's herb, I think Owen was calling it. <laughs> All right, so it's as simple as. All of those ingredients in there. Soy. Oh, probably need to open it first. <laughs> Soy. And then mix. Okay. Okay. That right there will be delicious. What we'll do is we'll just let that sit. Ah, I see the problem here. We're going to need this bowl. Because <laughs> we're going to need the pan to cook the second dish. <laughs> okay. I see the problem. I see it. Spread that out. I'll give us a little bit, a little bit more working area. We'll have a little picnic. Ready to go. And nothing complicated about this one. It's just butter it up. <laughs> I bought a butter and it's still pretty, pretty firm actually, which is nice. <laughs> now, we're not gonna be shy here. We are going a chunk of butter. <laughs> we may even use more. We've got to use it. <laughs> oh baby, some serious butter action. Okay, 
get our lobster tail and we don't put it in because I want to put some salt and pepper on first <laughs> now we've got a bit of seasoning on there just curl him up put his face down in the butter and now we just wait for deliciousness <laughs> what we should do if we had something we should put a lid on it do I have anything I could use? not really Flip them over for a sec, try and get a little bit on the other side. Yeah. Sort of works. And back over. Ooh, look at that. I think we might almost be done. It's just such a thick lobster. Because I'm gonna have to cheat and check it in check it in the center. It's only just starting to turn in the center. But I don't want to overcook it either, so you know what? I'm happy to call it. I don't even mind if it's a little bit raw. On the raw side is always better. Ah, yelch. Let's move you out of the way. All right, look at this. How's this for a spread? Two courses, lobster two ways. We've got our first course here. I'm dying to try some of this actually. So we'll get a bit of soy on. Yeah, nice to get a lobster or a crayfish, sorry. Nice to get a crayfish. In Australia, we would call this a painted crayfish. Definitely not a lobster in Australia. But, um, you know, in uh, other parts of the world, you probably might commonly call it a lobster, but it's we call it crayfish here, painted crayfish. Hit it around here. We went around thinking, oh, it's going to get less silty. It's going to get less silty. And it didn't get less silty. It just got more and more silty. I was almost about to give up on the spear, and I thought, you know what, maybe, maybe squid, because there's a lot of weed. I don't know, but the clarity is really not there. Though I did see a few things, like maybe a tusk fish, or there's definitely parrot fish. That, that was my, uh, oh my God, I've got to get something plan. Uh, the parrotfish, but luckily we didn't have to do that because I turned around, I gave up on the, uh, like I was just getting silt here as I've moved around, so I gave up and came back around and um, just happened to stumble across a big cave, there was a big, uh, so what, are, what do they call them, those painted sweet lip in there, and uh, I saw him disappear and then I went, you know what, that looks like a pretty good cave, because typically they like the like they nice overhangs as well, and when I got in there, I straight away saw uh, the big feelers coming out, and uh, like, I went for a grab, and I got one antenna, he sort of flicked back, but then I could see he sort of flicked back to the side, he was in the clear, but I just couldn't reach him properly, so I thought, you know what, I'm allowed to here in Queensland, so I took the shot with a spear gun, because I thought, this could be the only thing, the like, only good thing I come across, so we got him on the spear in the end, even though I sort of tried to grab him and, and sort of stuffed it up, but foolish big guy he actually didn't run away like most of the time they scoot all the way back to a cave and there's no chance of getting them but this guy I actually went around the back and I could see him and I sort of had a poke around and I think that might have even been what spooked him back to the front then when I still stuck my head in I was like oh I'm not even gonna risk it I know he's a good one let's just get him we speared him in the end which is not uncommon up in Queensland but obviously not quite the uh, hero worthy grab but um still very good to get one but enough talk let's uh let's start trying some hey look at that coriander garlic just had a little bit of time to soak all the soy in okay i'm ready let's get a big bit of that chili nice bit of lobster a bit of coriander mm. yum that really is just so good i can't like um I know I always say it's so good, but something about it, the texture, 
it just with the soy, it's just super, it's like a taste explosion with the coriander and the chili. Those chilies actually, I thought they were just the big chilies. They're the only ones I could get at the supermarket up here. I thought they weren't going to be that hot, but they're actually pretty spicy. I like it hot anyway, so I'll be fine. Oh. I've been craving this for a long time. Yum. Man, I've got a lot of food to get through. <laughs> How good is that mouthful? Mmm. Try that. If you're into, say, raw dishes, but with the soy on it, it doesn't really taste like overly raw or anything like that. It's pretty darn good. And I've got a hell of a lot to get through. I'm glad I didn't sort of cook anything else apart from the protein because I got, I got a lot to get through. Now with this one, how am I going to do this? I might put it back in the holder and try and break a bit off. Oh, look at that. Just broke off nice and easy. Oh, oh my God, it's so juicy. Look at that. Not overcooked, I don't think. I think we did all right in the end. So we'll try a bite. Hmm. Really good. Mmm. And I think I said this on that last video I did when I did them two ways, but it's so nice the contrast. Just a nice salty, buttery, sort of hot fried. Mmm. Um, I haven't overcooked it because you can tell because it's not super chewy. Sometimes when I overcook it, it gets a little bit chewier. But that, I don't know if you can see, it never focuses properly on the GoPro, but that's very nicely cooked. Oh, look at it just pull out. Yeah, we can have a proper bite. <laughs> look at that. That's out of control. It's really good. Man, I have one hell of a feast to get through here. If you look over here, how cool is that cloud cover? Just cutting across. Very picturesque. Alright, well, I'll see you on day two.